Hey everybody, welcome back to Stay Positive. Sorry for the delay. I know I've had a few weeks there that went by without a new episode, but I have recorded three more and I'm still recording a bunch, so I'll slowly roll those out and make it a regular thing again. So Harvest Moon, our third installment of our live comedy show is happening again at Laces in Koreatown, Los Angeles. Um, That will be on May 29th and we have an awesome lineup, so I guess a week from today. And after that, I, it'll continue to happen at the end, at the end or towards the end of every month. So keep an eye out for that. Also, if you have a computer and YouTube, uh, please watch uh, this show that I got to write for. It's called Dating After College. Um, it's with Wang Fu, who is a YouTube production company uh, that you may already know of because they're a big deal. And I had the honor of writing with them. So yeah, check it out. I wrote episodes two, four, and six. There's seven episodes total and the season and the show's called Dating After College. Yay. And they're all out now. So I think they're kind of rolling them out week after week. And finally, all seven episodes are out so you can binge the whole thing. So today's guest is a really awesome person I got to meet uh, via stand-up. She's a stand-up comic as well, but she also has a bunch of experience just like in TV and film and stuff. But I think what I found most exciting about having her on the podcast is we had met at a show and she has a lot of material about like being a smiley person and her Instagram is smile Lexi and like she's a very um, magnetic person because I think she's very positive so I was like okay great guest for the podcast but also we talk a little bit about how like that can also be kind of get a weird backlash from people like uh, she had a funny story where some professor like left her a note about being so smiley it's it's very (laughs) it's some interesting stuff I think this will be a, a podcast favorite for me for sure so I won't delay it any further um, please enjoy this interview with Lexi Grace. Yay! Hi, Lexi. Thanks Hi. so much for doing the podcast and coming all the way over to my place, which you haven't been before. Yeah, this it was where I live. This is it's a very cute place. Yeah, it's I fun. I really liked it. I also like that like I um I've always gone past that park, but I've never gone Ooh, through it. Yes, so it was I the first time going Alicia through. Park for yeah. All the, you know, stalkers out there, right? Now they know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a good place. I don't take advantage of it, honestly. Wait. Um, do you like going outside and doing like outside stuff? Um, Are you an outside person or an inside person? I do like outside stuff, but I like <laughs> inside. I don't know. I, no, I, think, I mean, I, I definitely don't think I'm an outside stuff. I tend person. to go inside more, but if it's cool, then I'll go outside. Like every year, oh, me wow. and my mom go religiously to um, a uh, lavender festival in Cherry Valley. Whoa. Yeah, okay. and so everything's wow. lavender, like lavender beef brisket, lavender chicken, <laughs> lavender lemonade. I did not expect lavender. lavender beef brisket to come out of your mouth. Yeah. I was thinking like lavender soap, lavender, you know, color. Like, I well, know. they do have lavender yeah. soap and lavender. Sure. I hope so. But yeah, lavender beef brisket. brisket. It's actually really good. Is it overwhelmingly lavender that uh, Um, Like a hint of lavender. Okay. It's like marinated in lavender. Um. Okay. And yeah, then there's like sense. lavender fields and they play classical music. Oh, so like okay. I rep hard for like lavender when it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lavender fields in the music. Wait, wait. I mean, lavender music in the fields. Is that what you are saying or what? <laughs> well, they play they play classical music, like oh. little tiny cellos and music like okay. in the in like there's Beautiful. like hammocks uh-huh. and then you can kind of like next to the field and then you can kind of like sleep if you want to. Okay, so then is there um, lots of, like, photo ops? Do you get your, you know, in the field sort of how people would do the super bloom thing where they go to the super bloom and then take a photo in the bloom? Exactly. Good, good. Get exactly. that lavender photo op. Um, but, wow, that's exciting. I did not ever consider that there might be a lavender festival in Cherry Valley. Um, so that's cool. But you should go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It's that in June. Good. It's coming up. Good. Here I come. Um, but cool. So obviously I've, I met you through comedy. Yes. We met at Peter Kim's suddenly stand up show. Um, and you're hilarious. And I feel like you're, you're perfect hilarious. for this podcast. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now we're done. Um, and I feel like your, uh, demeanor on stage is similar to you off stage, but like, you know, I, I really liked your joke about how, uh, you know, you smile a lot and maybe that means people don't take you seriously or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I feel like I get that sometimes too. I don't, I, I don't know if I, it's not that I'm smiley, but like sometimes I would feel like if I was too overjoyed, 
on a regular basis, people would be like, she doesn't understand life because she's too happy. It's like, well, actually, the opposite. I feel like you you just get over. Yeah, no, that ha- that like uh-huh. that. It, it, it definitely like that came from like a place of like it happening to me too many times where people like I think a lot of times people are like, do you speak English? <laughs> <laughs> they just assume automatically you like can't possibly understand the language. Yeah. Because I guess is it like some certain places have happier people and that's what they're referring to? I don't even know. I don't uh-huh. I Maybe it's I don't maybe it's like a of, sense like, of like she's not like it's there's like if she was paying attention to everything happening she wouldn't be this happy yeah yeah i used to have a um one time when i was interning i was working in london Mm -hmm. and actually in my exit interview they were like maybe you should try being more like stressed or like look angry or upset what because i just looked What? that's so funny because i just they were they were basically saying that like because the thing was that I would do things, like, really fast. Like, they would say, like, hey, we need this fixed, right? Right. And then I would come to them, and they would be like, hey, aren't you going to go fix that thing? And I'm like, it's already fixed, you know? Right. You're like, I'm so, like, <laughs> yeah, blink, but, and you miss it. You exactly. Know? But I was so efficient that, like, they kind of worried that I understood, like, if I was ever, sh- like, they worried that when they said things that I wasn't really processing it, like, that I wasn't going to do it. Because like, it was just like, it's all great. It's done. And they weren't used to that sort of Exactly. Yeah. So they were like, we're stressed. You should be stressed. And I was right. like, I don't, I can't. Oh my so God. then they were, so then at my exit interview, they were like some advice, like maybe just pretend to be stressed. That is so funny. I mean, I, I can totally understand that in like a, what kind of internship was it? Um, it was like a film internship. So I was oh, like, okay. they didn't have a PA. So I basically was like their PA. Like mm. I got. And even then they wanted you to seem more stressed. Yeah. Well, because I was always like, yeah, OK. Like it would always be like this huge, like it was almost like if they gave me like a Herculean task. Right. And then they were like, she'll never get it done. And then at the end, it was like, I came from uh, Hades and I brought this back sure, to you. Yeah. And it was great. Exactly. Um, I see. Okay. Well, obviously, I would rather work with you than with somebody who's stressed all the time because that would stress <laughs> me out, right? But I could see where, you know, if they're in some sort of thing where, like, if it looks like it was easy, then it seems like it was easy. You know what I mean? Or like, um. Yeah. I don't know. Or in a cor- or like corporate culture, I'm assuming. I don't know. I really haven't experienced that, that there's some sort of like, well, if you're not working hard, like if I'm not, if I can't tell you're working hard, then you're not, you know what I mean? And it's sort of about perception and stuff. Right? It, yeah, I guess. Like there was one time where it was like they knew they gave me this crazy task where it was like I had to find all these remake movies, but like these bad remake movies. Okay. So I had to find, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this movie called Get Shorty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know if it's a... uh, Was that the one with Steve Carell? Like, did it come get remade? No, they did a TV show, though, so he could have been in the TV show. But they did one with... um, I don't know if it was bad, but they did it with Sylvester Stallone, and the original had um, Michael Caine. Got it. Okay, okay. That was another (laughs) movie. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. And to be clear, I've never seen it, so it might be a good remake, but we were in London, so everyone's like... Eats Breeze, Michael Caine. I love Michael Caine. Oh, really? Nice. So they kept laughing me off the phone when I was like, no, I need this other version. And then I ended up um, finding it in this weird hoarder house kind of store. Uh, oh, it was like uh, that hard store. to get DVD or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Because oh, it had to be a certain frame rate so that we could air it on oh. British oh, TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, it reminds me of like Devil Wears Prada where she asks her to get the manuscript. Have you seen? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. She gets, she's like, I need the, not for the Harry Potter book that's out, like the one that's not even published yet. And like, that's a, such a crazy task. And then she comes in, she's like, yeah, it's already on the, you know, she drops it off. She's like, oh, this is only one copy. What are they supposed to share? And she's like, it's already on the train with them on the way to like grandma's or wherever they're going. Yeah. And they're like reading it on the train. And she's very calm about it. So that's obviously very. Yeah, no, good. definitely. But, def- like, <laughs> you're in Hathaway, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've had, uh, yeah, I've definitely um, had my fair share of uh uh, Meryl Streep kind of bosses and Devil's oh, really? Wears Prada, yeah. Well, okay, so then that's the thing where I'm like, especially with long hours, you know, I'm thinking like if you're working in a film production or something like that, yeah. it's like long hours. Everybody does lean towards more positive because that's just like the people who are getting jobs because I think that's just like who you can tolerate for 17 hours a day. Yeah. Like I remember working um, as a script coordinator for a show once or I was like writer's assistant too and um, 
everybody was like so cheery like to the point where like I would definitely be concerned if they were just my friend. I would be like, yeah, maybe something's going on. Like, do you need to cry? Right. But Win twice if you're being held <laughs> exactly, hostage. Exactly. Yeah. But as a coworker, it was like the most, uh, it was very helpful because then, you know, you're waking up at like 4 a.m. or something for a really early day and, and you just want to be grumpy. But then if everybody else is happy, you're like, I guess I got to be happy. And then it makes you happy, you know, no, outside for in, sure. Right? Um, so that's a kind of attitude that I think does work actually in film stuff but uh i can also see where people want the display of like i'm working you hard aren't i come on let me know how great a boss i am by showing out how stressed you are you know like that's so that's yeah. like so silly though but um i remember like sometimes among friends who were a little bit more you know who were God, I, I don't know in college for instance a lot of a lot of friends were very um smart but like very i think conscious of the fact that to be smart you also kind of have to be sad Mm -hmm. You know, like if I'm so aware of the world, like I also have to be fully um, sad about the things that are going on, which is true. And I think today is even more relevant because yeah. there's like so many things in the news. But I think that like then it became a thing where it was maybe a little performative where we were like getting a lot of like, OK, well, you know, obviously we all are living in the same world and it is really shitty sometimes. Yeah. But like, I don't know if. I, I don't like the idea that we should then belittle each other for not showing, the, like coping with it the same exact way. No, for sure. For um, sure. So that's why I like <laughs> your joke. I don't know. Just tracing it. No, back, no. That's, yeah, I know. I, 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 I definitely, I definitely agree with you on the sense that it's like, it is, it is such a, um, the world can be so sad and it can be so. <laughs> See, this is where I always bring this podcast back to in the world. It's in the, bad, yeah, right? in the world, it, and it's bad, you know, with all the stuff in the news and stuff like that. And like, um, I think I, I think it's like, I do get very empathetic, and I do like, I do um, get emotional when you hear those things. Mm -hmm. But it's also like for me, it's it's hard to uh, stay like in that headspace because yeah. then I'll get like really like, oh, this is an awful place right, to right. be. Then you know, you're like, from experience, I do not want to go there. <laughs> exactly. Like I feel like my best friend, I, what I love about her is she's really empathetic mm -hmm. and she will um, like, she's the type of person that like when we watch the news, she'll like start bawling. Oh, like I, one time um, we were walking past a cemetery and she accidentally like saw one of the graves and she just like started crying for this guy that she didn't know. Oh, wow. Was it like a moving quote or? <laughs> no, she just like she had done the math about like oh. how long the guy had lived. And oh, then she had read like the, you know, loving father. And she was like, oh, just that? yeah, she <laughs> was very. Yeah, she's very easily wow. triggered. Yeah, that's. That's very nice to have a friend like that, I think. I um, feel like me, like, I, I cry a lot during um, Undercover Boss. Mm, they're moving stories. Yeah, and uh, sometimes Hallmark, man. Oh, Hallmark Channel. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I don't think I've seen anything on that recently. Is that more like drama movies that are based in... <laughs> like it's like why well, I watch a lot of the Christmas movies. Oh, cool! Like it's like we gotta yeah, save the heart. thing, and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm like a big, that. I'm a big softy. No, that's great. Um, yeah, what's something you cried at recently? Uh, ooh, what is something I cried about recently? Like cried out recently. Um. Okay, so I watch. Okay, this is gonna sound really weird. Uh, <laughs> brace yourself. I think we actually already talked about this a little bit. Oh, right. Not on this podcast, but right, right. Um, yeah. Uh, but I watch um, a Korean um, like toddler show where it's like toddlers, uh, toddlers having fun. Like it basically is like um, for the most part, it's celebrity dads with their toddler kids. But as the years progress, they realize like, oh, the kids are where it's at, so we're gonna just have the kids go on multiple okay. activities. And then the dads kind of are part of it, but not really. Um, but anyway, in this particular one, there was like the dad and it was like a dad and a son. And the, the little boy, I think his name is like um, Bung Yu, Bung Yu. And so Bung Yu is like, it starts out with them really cutely. They got me first on the cute part. He was like taking little pictures of the, of the, um, of the outside he's like a three-year-old he's got his little camera and he's taking his like dad's like dlsr camera that's like really expensive and he's like lifting it on the ground taking some cute shots of him and then he drops it on the ground then the dad is like oh no the camera and then you hear the little son going um uh 
uh, what is it? Uh, he says sorry, which is like uh, bin. Y- b- I don't know. Never mind. It's not important. But he sa- <laughs> but he says sorry, and then they then the son the dad's like it's okay, and then they end up going to visit the grandfather who's in the hospital, and the little boy makes the grandfather so happy, and then the dad and the you know the dad's uh, talking to the, his dad who's the grandfather and the grandfather's like, you know, I'm sorry that I'm so sick and I'm sorry that I've oh, been such a Jesus. burden. Wow, this is getting deep. And the dad was basically <laughs> like, you never were a burden. Like, thank you so much for my life. I am oh. everything I am because oh. of you. And it's just like, and you, it's just a beautiful moment. And then the little oh. boys in the background, just like kissing the grandfather. And oh, you're like, Oh, oh my God. God. It's li- like literally just my heart lay it all out. Yeah. yeah. That's the hardest thing. Um, starting from just the little kids all the way to like generational love yeah i was just like i was done i was done and then the other thing that i cried about recently was um i don't know if you saw the story of like there was like two random women who were really slow in a marathon and they met each other like like in in mile 14 because they were like both like walk running and they Uh they were thinking about quitting and at one point, one turns to the other one and is like, let's not quit. Like, that was, like, the first time that they had, like, ever talked. But they had, like, seen each other for, I guess, the 14th. And they were like, okay. So then they held hands. And ran the rest? And ran the oh, rest. Like 12 more miles? That's a lot. Yeah. It took them eight hours to run the whole entire okay. marathon. <laughs> so it's a long, it's a lot of miles. Yeah. But it's, um, uh, it was, like, sharing, like, rapid fire, like, people in the world being like, look how beautiful. So oh, it's, like, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So where are you finding that content? Oh, Online. Online. Uh, yeah, okay, so the thing that with the father-son stuff, I think father-son stuff, like, gets me. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, it's just, I don't even have any brothers. So, like, my dad, I mean, it's like, I, you know, my dad's fine. Like, we're all fine. My, I have an older <laughs> sister. Like, it's like, whatever. Da- you know, father, daughter, like, boring. But um, father-son stuff, I'm like, oh, because it's like, Men are told they can't really, like, express their feelings. So then when they finally tell their dad, I love you, or the dad says, I'm so proud of you, son. And, like, oh, I'm, like, crying. Um, so anything, movies or anything like that, I just love it. Even, like, I got a little, like, foot clumped when I was, like, on the airplane. And I saw, um, like, a, a dad just playing with his son. And I was just right? like, this it's is like, so oh, beautiful. Yes, you guys are going to be so great for the rest of your lives. Um, I love it. I love a good, a good dad. I, um... I cried recently at my boyfriend's like stepdad's wedding because of all the like wedding stuff and then all the like uh, I don't know speeches. Um, he gave yeah. a speech and it's like his stepdad and it's like oh like and nobody else is crying. I was like the only one. Crying. <laughs> no, I think other people were, but it was definitely funny because I think it's just I don't know, just weird. And also, if you're a little tipsy on wine, you definitely get, get yeah. More emotional. What was um. Uh, do you remember any of the lines in the speech that like hit you, you know, that were like? I feel like it was just. It was. It wasn't like a super long speech, but yeah. I feel like what it was just like the gesture of going up to speak about your dad is like crazy to me. I mean, like for instance, when my sister got married. Okay, so weddings get me, whoa surprise. But when my sister got married, like my dad gave a speech and he was getting choked up and yeah. like you know, especially with dads, it's like they're so stoic. And, well, mine is sometimes, um, you know, pretty, pretty serious. Doesn't, you know, I don't see him cry that often. And um, so like to hear him try to speak through tears is like the oh, end. You I'm know getting I mean? a little like, emotional. I know. It's like anytime somebody's trying to speak through tears or like keep going and push through tears, like that's really, really gets me because that just, you can really empathize with that. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. So that was, I think, also similar in the sense of like dad's. Try not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love just do, like a compilation of that. On I YouTube. no, exactly. I love. Um, I do love watching weddings. Yeah, they're fun. Like I've 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 crashed like two weddings. What? How do you do that? First one was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend said we were invited when we got <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> was this like out of town? Uh, no, it was in New York, but he had, we were already hungry, and he was like, well, you might as well come. There's going to be some food. <laughs> that is not how weddings work. That's so funny. I love it. I mean, maybe some weddings. Yeah. But yeah, did he? so was he invited? Or So he was dropping what? off, like, gifts for, like, his family, like, on behalf of his family. Okay. But he was actually, like, the most underdressed out of all of us. Like, he was wearing a green T-shirt. Nice. And I'm leaving out, like, a big fact that this was a Chinese wedding. Even better. So, I honestly, what does that look 
like. Exactly. Is it just like Chinese restaurant kind of thing? So we went to the after party. Like we okay, went to the like reception the reception. Thing? Exactly. The after party so we were way. in like a big banquet hall. And I don't mm. know if this is how all – I don't know. I mean like so I'm half. So some of my cousins on, yeah. on my mom's side who's Chinese have had like – uh, some receptions at Chinese restaurants, so that's all I can compare it to. But we're very, like, yes. we're third, fourth generation. So, so this uh-huh. was like a big, and it could have been a restaurant. I'm not really quite sure where we were. It was a, all I can tell yeah. you was it was a big, 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 like almost like I guess it it could have been like a like a big room, and there was a bunch of different tables. Like I guess it could have been a restaurant at some point. Or maybe it was a restaurant. Yeah. And there was uh-huh. different, like, in all different corners, there was different wedding, like, different wedding receptions happening. <laughs> yeah, that had to be a Chinese restaurant. I think because they, <laughs> they just do have, like, banquet hall rooms. And you can, like, rent it out. But there can be multiple things going on. Yeah. And it's, like, chill. Because it's, like, well, there's so much space. So we might as well have four weddings. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we went to the wedding that we were supposed to crash at, I guess. And, and no one at my table spoke English, but they were really nice. They just kept, like, trying oh, to know. put vodka in my bottle. Oh. They were like, drink, drink, drink. Yeah. Um, so that was really cute. And then the woman actually saved me, one of the women that was at my table, because oh. the bride – so after, like, they opened, like, all the gifts, mm-hmm. like, at the at this wedding in particular. I don't know if it's um, – Yeah, I guess that's not – but yeah, they opened all the gifts and then they said like how much it retail valued too. Like if you gave like cash or something, like they would be like, so and so gave me two hundred bucks. So and so gave me a hundred bucks. They would bucks. say retail value of the item. Too? <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Like, I, a blender, which is forty five dollars. Like <laughs> exactly. I don't think it was a normal wedding that I I crashed at. Just to be. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Particular. Why crash a normal wedding. And then she started wearing all of her jewels, right? The bride. Oh, that she was receiving. That she was receiving. Oh, okay. And then at one point, she gets off the stage to, like, thank everybody personally yeah, after they've mm-hmm. opened all the gifts. And she gets to my table. And I'm, like, the one of the only non-Asian people at the <laughs> wedding. And the other nice, non-Asian yeah. person I crashed with right, right. at the, the green, wedding. Green tea? Yeah, nice. exactly. Green t-shirt. <laughs> it, it, oh, no, no. The green t-shirt oh, guy, uh-huh. he, was, um, he was Chinese. Oh, okay, okay. But then the other two people that he invited were not so it was just like so at one point the bride comes to me and she gives me a hug and she looks at me and she like there's clearly a thing of like i did not invite you you're not supposed to be here and she's about to say something to me and then the woman next to me who has kept offering me all the drinks she pushes the woman into her and gives her a very tight hug like to save me wow what a hero yeah that's huge um but that's weird. Like, I wonder if I would even call someone out. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it's just like, well, you're already here. Like, it's a party, whatever, right? Yeah. But so, they had a lot of, I like... sometimes that's a bride thing. I don't know. No, no. I think it's... Well, I don't know. If someone was... I don't know. They also were serving a lot of lobster. So I could see them oh, being okay. like, yeah. they need to get this person <laughs> out of my wedding. <laughs> Who's this person eating all the lobster? Exactly. Um, well, that's fun. I mean, sounds like it, it was not... Yeah, a very good... <laughs> The fact that she's like naming all the prices, like prices right situation. I feel like it's okay, you trash, you know? Oh my gosh, you I love see that. I love that you said price is right. I didn't even think about that. I mean, that. I guess that she'd probably kill it on that show. Um, but wow, what a fun thing. I, I think there were a couple wedding crashes the last wedding I went to, which was kind of funny. Like, you can kind of spot it. But they came like after, like in the dancing. So it's like more of the marriage. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Um, How could you spot them? Well, because, like, nobody – I hadn't seen them the whole wedding. Like, we hadn't seen them the whole wedding, and it was, like, a pretty long, multi-day thing. So you kind of got to know almost everyone. And then and then they kind of just showed up at the end. So it's like – and then nobody was like, oh, hey, it's Jennifer. You know, it was like, who are those randos? <laughs> that's, that's goals right there. I want to be invited to a multi-day wedding. I mean, yeah, it was, like, um, in Northern California, like, Napa. So there was, like, wine tasting. And yeah. It was a very cool situation. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I do have a lot of friends that have gotten married, um, in recent years or are you, um, I don't know. Or is it like mainly family that you are crashing only? Um, so my friend, yeah, I've had a few friends get wed. um, woo, get married, get, get married, wed, get, wed. get wed. Yeah. I was going <laughs> to say get wed. And then I was like, that is not the right. I, mean, I 
can accept it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I had um, then I've had some friends that have had destination weddings, so obviously mm-hmm. I couldn't go to those. That's but intense. yeah, like I mean, I wanted to, but it just right. It's like it would be your vacation for the year, or like you know, like that sort of thing. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's yeah. I guess like it's also like yeah. It it just a lot yeah yeah fair enough um but sweet i mean back to back to good old comedy yeah did you when did you start and what kind of got you into it because i know you're working um, in animation weren't you weren't you kind of doing something yeah like i was doing before? animation oh. um okay so uh that story actually okay so i was i got into so how i got into stand-up is very different from how i got into comedy but I'll get, I'll get into the how nice. I got into stand-up story. And okay. then if you want, I could double back. Sure. We'll but, see how you do in the first story. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Pressure is on. Yeah, yeah. This is your first round of the interview. Yeah. This interview might e- not even make it. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it might be. Ooh, we tr- might cut all of everything. <laughs> yeah. It would just be like uh, found in the archives. Um, right, right. Uh, but basically how I ended up getting into it was like, yeah. Okay. So I went to. Okay. Um, so I went to school to. Write and direct. I went to NYU. Nice. Then Is after that Tish. Yeah, oh, Tish. Nice. Okay. And Fam- famous. <laughs> and then after I came back to LA, I was trying to. I wanted to be a comedy writer, right? Mm. And I couldn't. I couldn't get nothing. Like no one would look at anything in New York. I had a little bit of traction, but out here I was like nothing, nothing. And so uh, I had an old boss who was like, hey, come work for me. She worked in an animation company. So I was like, cool. So I ended up being there for uh, three years. Uh, The first year was like okie doke. Like I was really excited. Second year, it was like, it was a little bit crushing to be like so close to what you want to do. And like, you're not in the thing. Uh Because like I was interacting with like talent and like showrunners and writers like on a daily basis and directors. So it was like, I was so close to what I wanted and yet so far away. Like it was kind of like being like, like wanting to be an astronaut and you're like a janitor at NASA. <laughs> oh my God. I really, I like that analogy a lot. Um, but also I totally know what you mean. And I think that's like a huge thing that people experience in all sorts of things, but all, especially in TV film. Yeah. Right? So like, and I would like, I would be like, I would kind of like when they would leave like the room, I would like visualize myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. You like where that position. Chair, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like that little creeper. No, I don't know. <laughs> So year two, I was getting a little bit restless. Like I was like, okay, I need a change. I need, you know, I need something. So I started doing improv, right? Nice. And I had done improv before, um, but I was like, you know what? I really like improv. So I started taking like everywhere. Like I went to, like I was going to like three different improv schools. I was doing improv like pretty much like just like double dipping improv, 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 improv. So I went to a very uh, prestigious improv school. I will not give the name. Oh, okay. To, yeah. To that save. That shall not be named. Oh. That that shall not be named. And I moved up, which is like you're not, you know, there's certain level. Like I moved up pretty quickly in like oh, the class structure, um, which is not usual. Some people have to repeat and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And um. Uh, so I was, like, really excited. It was, like, everyone was, like, all my improv teachers, like, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. So then I get to this class, and um, I have this teacher, and she just hates me. Mm. She just starts. It, yeah. She just starts, like. Just she's, like, I see this person's light, and I want to put it on Exactly. That light. I swear they like, did. she would be, know. like, why are your joke so hacky? Like, just, like. Yeah. Just like new choice, new choice, new choice. And then there was a bunch of, it was, and then also like that my class didn't like me. It was like no one Aww, liked yeah, me yeah. in the thing. And um, at the end of that class, you're, you're, you get an evaluation to find out if you can move on yeah. or you, you know, you have to retake or um, you like, and then you also get notes and feedback. Um, and she told me in my thing that I should quit comedy holy moly what the hell yeah she was like you're already at that point so it's not like that's like extreme yeah she was just like she was like i don't think you're gonna be i don't think you're gonna like i i don't think 
she was like, I don't think you're, you know, I think you should like, and I, she was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, you know, I want to write and direct and like act and all these different things. And she just kind of laughed. She was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. It's and it's so subjective too. Like, it's so crazy that people can be in a powerful position like that. And yeah. That, like their opinion is the only that matters. Yeah. Like, haven't they been here long enough to realize that people they didn't like made it and people who they did like don't you know like, it's always crazy. yeah it's a weird thing so then um and the weird thing too is that she had always like kind of implied that like i reminded her of herself so it was it was also it was also really weird in that regard um so then after that i was like i didn't have fun in in, in improv because i was like i was like oh, totally I just like it was like she was in my head. I had like yeah, no kidding. anxiety, but I still was like, I'm not going to let my dream die with this woman. Nice. Yeah. yeah exactly. So I ended up going crazy. Like I took a bunch of not in a bad way, in a good way. <laughs> okay, good. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like crazy like implies that like I got like red plane and I just started right, throwing right, it at right. the you wall. started like tracking her down in her home. Yeah. No, that, that didn't happen. Um, I went crazy in the sense that I um, I ended up taking all these different classes because i just wanted to get it out of my mouth cool yeah, yeah. so i was taking like all these weird improv? improv like mm -hmm. yeah like character classes da, 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 da. but it still was like it still was not feeling great like i was taking it at all these you know experimental places just okay, being like yeah. something will Outside happen of the mainstream sort of improv route and then my mom's friend was like hey um you might want to go check out this place called uncabaret mm. um with this lady named Beth Lapidus. Okay, I've heard of that. It's like a show, or is it a? Is it a also a? It's space? a. It's a show, and then she also does a class. Okay. Cool. Um. So she was like, "You might want to check out the class. Mm -hmm. You know, it's basically like you talk about your day, and you kind of um, you you rant about it, right? Cool. So I was like, "Oh, that sounds like she was like it might it thing? might loosen you up, right? So I end up because at that time I was also working at this place. Um, I end up getting to my classes like probably like an hour late mm -hmm. so i didn't hear the explanation for what the class was so <laughs> Best when, way to take class so now. when i get there they're like it's your turn go up so i just assume everything that i've heard about it which is like you just go up and you talk about your day <laughs> so <laughs> this is great no no asking for clarification like, yeah. all right yeah i mean i'm sure that everybody had it right <laughs> Yeah, this this was, and again, this was not actually what the class was about. I come to find out near the end of the Wonderful. class. Uh -huh. But because I get there late, every time I would just be like, yeah, okay. So I just started talking about like what was happening in the week and people were laughing. And uh, and she goes, at the end, she goes, do you want to do stand-up? And I go, no, no. Because no. I, yeah. I knew stand-ups and I, because like my mom was a stand-up and oh, a no, bunch right. of her friends okay. were stand-ups. Oh, wow. Um, my mom doesn't do stand-up anymore, but she used to do it. And so I had been around that life, and I was like, I, oh, hecklers, no. <laughs> like, I just, I, I just, like, it was just like, no. Like, right, that was, like, automatic. Yeah, so she was like, she was like, I guess she was like, so you, so you not want to do stand-up? And I was like, no. And she was like, because you've been doing stand-up the last six weeks. <laughs> like, you, this is a right. class where people bring in stories and ideas, and you've just been talking oh, off the top of your head. So what was, yeah, what were other people doing? Um, like, I guess, like, other people were bringing in, like, scripts or things that they were working on. Mm -hmm. and, and then they would recite it in front of the class or they would just pass it around? Sometimes it would be, like, people would read it. It's basically, like, a workshopping class so you can work out whatever you want. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and you could also do stand-up, too. Like, there, there were some people that were doing stand-up. <laughs> but you, like, found, like, meandered your way into stand-up. Yeah, and, uh, and so I fought her. I took it again because, like, I really enjoyed the class. Like, I was getting my spark back of, cool. like, yeah, yeah. performing. I liked Enjoying it. it. Uh -huh. And uh, at the end, she kind of – I took it maybe, like, two more, two or three more times, and she said, look, Lexi, I know you don't want to be a stand-up, but this might be a way for you to um, – what do you call it? This might be a way for people – to look at your scripts because they, they can't, yeah. you know, it's hard for you to say like, Hey, I'm funny. Read this. Right. Versus if they see you're funny, they're going to be like, do you have anything we can read? Totally. And she was right. That's ended up what ended up happening. And I was, I was able to write like an Ikea commercial from doing stand up, mm -hmm. but, um, it just was a, uh, yeah, it was just like, had I not had that teacher that was so mean and so awful sure. and also being in this like, kind of not fun work environment of like being 
so close. I don't yeah. think I would have decided to go in stand up. And then sure enough, like I, I, I have addictive personality. So like once I do something, like I go all in. Cool. So I, I ended up falling in love with stand up. So then I was like, oh, okay, actually I like this thing. And now, um, I, I don't know if I, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and you're good at it. So that worked, but yeah, yeah it's like, that's so crazy about that teacher still. I mean, I, I feel that like you're always going to encounter people who are like haters and um, it's sort of hard to ignore. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we know like logically that they can't be right. You know, you, it's hard. It's like you always notice it's like scrolling through comments or something. You always notice the negative. Even if there's like 10 positive um, and to have like a teacher at that level, you know, and like respected. And I think I know which school you're talking about. <laughs> it, like it, it's it's a lot of you know you think they have must have some sort of expertise because they're working there and um like because i understand like if you go in having no improv experience and then the teacher's like yeah maybe this isn't for you at like the base like a basic yeah level um then like okay yeah right but if you're like already advanced it's like you've already gotten check marks from other people and so then the fact that somebody's like oh actually disregard everything that's <laughs> happened before and yeah. listen to me the expert of all things you know which is insane yeah it kind of felt like i kind of felt like at like you know, I didn't, I, I tried to disregard that as soon as possible, but yeah, like yeah. part of me was a, like kind of almost like, did, cause it she made it sound like I might've just like sneaked in, like someone well, wasn't mean, paying some, attention. Yeah. Yeah. You're running through the back just, door. Yeah. Um, well, cause that's the frustrating thing. Cause sometimes we feel that way anyway ourselves, you know, like imposter syndrome or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, the minute somebody confirms that for you or whatever, like agrees with that for you, it's like, that's the thing that's inside of me all the time so the minute that somebody goes like oh yeah and by the way Sierra you know that thing that's been itching at the back of your mind that like you aren't really good at any of this and you've figured out how to sneak your way in <laughs> that was right and so then of course that's going to set off fireworks in your brain like oh okay uh, confirmation confirmation or rather than somebody you know rather than it being logically like oh, okay this one person you know I'll take their uh opinion as an opinion and that's no f it. for sure yeah. and it's 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 really, it is interesting because, like, it's, like, yeah, there is, like, that imposter syndrome. Like, there's so many of my friends that are so creative. Like, I almost think sometimes um, some of the best writers I know are, like, the people that think that they're just, like, awful. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's just, like, like it. so it, weird. yeah, and I think it's, it's a thing that you kind of have to keep telling yourself, like, you're not and, like, training yourself. Like, uh -huh. I used to carry um, one of my old teacher's um, letters, like, Ooh. on my wall, like, a recommendation letter. And, oh, my God, I had the best. Um, okay, so I didn't – I did well in this class, but, like, my last uh, – like, this is another teacher. Okay, so in college, I was doing well in a class, but I was kind of skating by. Mm -hmm. And um, he – I didn't expect him to call me out on it. <laughs> and on my last paper wasn't really good and so he wrote this message and i still have it i still keep the paper even though it's like kind of like a neg i guess people would be like that's kind of a negative comment but he was just kind of like he was kind of like oh you you know you thought you could breeze past this class and like you know you think you can get away with it because of your oh so winning smile <laughs> But that, what a phrase then. yeah oh so, oh, winning, so winning, winning smile, smile. <laughs> and uh but he said he said but you're really like you're really ta like you're really talented and you're a good writer but you really need to work harder because okay. you don't want anybody just to think you can get away with like your california charm like he like really <laughs> Jesus. all right you're from california um Wow, okay. Yeah. Somebody has something against your oh so winning smile. Yeah, so I keep that on my wall. Like, so I look at that in the. I mean, that's like, I, I can see why that's also harder, good. Because yeah. it's like, it's, um, you know, it's giving you confirmation that you have it in you. Yeah. And that, like, the hard work can always be changed, right? That's something that you have control over. Yeah. So that is like, it's a compliment, even though it's also like a like a i don't know a lecture but yeah. yeah so i can see why you keep that that's that's a fun one yeah so i keep that and then like a few other really good recommendation letters uh like yes. on my wall just yeah, like as a reminder yeah. but like it a, yeah it is interesting that like um that imposter syndrome i feel like also you can kind of also do the opposite like in engineering like mm -hmm. you can kind of like I don't want to say like fake it until you make it, but you can be. <laughs> but fake it until you make it. No, yeah, okay. you can uh. be so pos like you can be so positive or so like I should be here, I should be here, I should be here that then people are like, oh yeah, I think they should yeah, be, I should here. be here. Yeah, I think that's very.
tricky, especially for something like there. No, there's not really a real way to gauge stuff in the real world. You yeah, know? like measuring ability is really hard. People aren't good at it. People like. Um, I feel like my dad always goes back to like sports things because because um, he does. But but one thing is that like you know people draft. Uh, athletes all the time like, yeah. and that's kind of a gamble because they don't know which one's going to be good and like they get it wrong a lot of times you know maybe the guy they spend a lot of money drafting this one guy and then he doesn't play so well the next year and then like he fades out and it's like well I guess we guessed wrong right <laughs> so like even then but then if that guy goes in being like I don't know I'm not good at basketball you know then like oh well then of course everybody's going to agree but like if he goes in being like yeah I totally deserve to be here then like he'll at least get to play for a few years and nobody will even know until yeah. he like fades out right but it's like interesting because that's why I try. Yeah. I try not to like when I have like a okay, and I don't know if you f- feel the same way, but like when I have like a set that I'm like a little okay, like I don't feel like I don't go like oh that was my strongest set mm-hmm. or that wasn't like the best like comedy like that wasn't the best comedy set I could have done. Yeah, I never say like I I might talk about it on like I might comment on it on well i probably won't comment on it on stage honestly i probably i don't even comment like after it happens because sometimes people come up to me and they go i remember that moment or i like like that that thing was like so good and it's like you're like uh but it's like to them like you said it's like it was fine exactly yeah a lot of that stuff could be in our head so sometimes like to vocalize it it makes it real that it was bad but then yeah i used to do the thing where like if i had slightly a bad set like i would try to get ahead of it and be like yeah i bombed i bombed i bombed like to everybody so that i could get ahead of yeah thinking that but then i realized like actually that's probably not a good <laughs> idea because then i mean people's memory isn't too great either so like if they that if they liked it and then they hear you say oh yeah i bombed that and then they're like oh okay yeah i guess they'll correct their memory and be like she did terrible <laughs> yeah no and it's also yeah. too like sometimes i found like i remember one time i did this story about just like it basically I was working out this bit about how um, I constantly am getting mistaken for other people. Yeah. Um, and it just I remember the first like the first couple of times like I actually did it in like shows. It was like pretty quiet. And I was like, you know, I was like, am I, am I bombing? It's, it's, it was working before. Yeah. And then I had all these people come up to me after the show that was like, I totally I get like I feel that so then I was like oh that was what was happening they were processing it and sure, they were yeah. they were going like like <laughs> that than like laugh out loud yeah like, so I was sort of thing. exactly I was like they were they were thinking about it so it just was it just is interesting to and it's also too like uh someone said this I can't remember who but someone said that silence like is good because silence means that they're actually like listening you have to be afraid when they're talking oh yeah yeah like talking to their friend on their phone or something yeah like, yeah that's a good point yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, sc- silence still very much scares me, but but I can see that. And it is very important to know that, like, our experience of, like, the same situation might be totally different to somebody else in the room, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just noticed, like, sometimes I'll have good sets or, like, I'll listen back. Um, I know one was recorded for me recently, like, the set I did. And, like, in the room, I felt like it was a great set. But then when I watched back the recording, like, because you couldn't hear the laughter. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the audience wasn't mic'd. It just looked like I was bombing the whole time. I've I've had that totally. So, ha- and yeah. then when it's like you're, then it's like you're watching the mic and like it's like you've paused because they've been laughing. And then when it's just, I've had it where it's just the mic. Okay. And uh-huh. it's not, it's not like you can't hear anything. It's exactly. literally pulled yeah, from I this feed. That, I think that's exactly kind of what it was, and it looked like. <laughs> and then the way I carry myself on stage, and I learned a lot from this. The way I carry myself on stage is like not, is like a little bit more. Uh, leaning leaning in and being very like come on guys so it looked like i was like saying a joke. <laughs> nobody was laughing i was like eh? yeah or like saying things after to try to get them to laugh like that's what it looked like even though it was just tags on the same joke yeah that were laughing at and that's so, so funny yeah I, and so it's like it looks horrible unfortunately it's like all on youtube and like everybody can watch it and everybody like in the comments is like shit audience they didn't get the jokes but it's like yeah but they actually did but you guys weren't fucking there because it's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But um, but what I learned from that is to just be more confident on stage because I think, you know, if somebody's just walking into the room or, you know, somebody yeah. just got there or somebody's watching it on YouTube or whatever, like, they're going to read your body language. And, like, if I'm up there flou- looking like I'm floundering because that <laughs> happened to be my demeanor and those jokes, even though it was funny. Yeah. Like, 
it looks like I'm bombing. And like some people who had, you know, the same situation, I think if you just like look comfortable, it totally changes. Cause it's like, yeah, she's bombing, but at least she's confident. No, for <laughs> sure. For sure. But it's just, I, 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 I'm laughing because I can visualize like as you're describing yeah. it to me because I've had tapes like that or it just looks like but it, it just looks like I'm That's just right. like I'm just like I'm like uh, I'm talking and then it's like all of a sudden I'm just nodding my head smiling. Right, like, right. It also like, looks a little strange. Yeah. It's like, you know, obviously you need the other input. So it's just interesting. It's, it's That's funny. You could um, also rip the audio and do it like a uh, um, like, you know, in those like videos online where it's like they do music videos and then it's just like the internal noise of like them like tr- like you know walking oh, or like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> smacking like, their Hi. lips yeah <laughs> good yeah i'll do that i'll fix it just um, <laughs> but, it yeah. Fully. but yeah it's it i think it definitely showed me that like oh man it's so important to just at least not be you don't have to be like overly confident but i think yeah. for me i was doing this thing for the past few years not even just on stage but in general where yeah. i was like well, if I don't act confident, then I can surprise them that I'm good. But it's like, well, I think it's probably better to just go into the room confident and like you'll get there, you know. It's There's am- always the outside in stuff, I guess. It's uh-huh. amazing how some people can like sell so much stuff with just confidence. Like, Oh, totally. It's like you go back and you actually like write down their set and there's no jokes. It's oh, just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you know, the way that they say it or they're standing. And stuff yeah, like it's just. Which a- I think guys can do very well. Um, cause they can't, you know, people like will listen to them even if they're not funny. Yeah. And like, they'll laugh at them even if they're not funny. Cause they remind them of male funniness. You know what I mean? Versus no, I like women, like we like have to have jokes. It's unfair, but it's like, it's shitty because I think we get less of a, a chance. Of a doubt. Yeah. Less yeah. Of a chance. So if it's like we have to come out swinging. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you don't come out hot, they're like, are like women aren't funny. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then it's like, I will say that anyway. So just fuck. I but root like, so yeah. much for girl comics at every show. I'm like, cause I'm like, we gotta, we gotta be tightly. Cause like the thing is yeah. that like, it could be like if, if like, if it's like, even if like I've seen it where it's like, if like all the girls on the lineup are like super funny mm-hmm. and then there's like, like there's like maybe like one one like you know like un- then it's like see that's and it's they you know what oh, I mean I know I mean it's just hard to win <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah in the in that position but yeah for sure I agree like there's so many great female comics it's just people are so into just like. I think people don't realize that, like, it's so subjective what people find funny. Yeah. You know, if when anything, when anything is subjective, then it means that it's, like, tied to, like, biases that are not necessarily No, for sure. Right? So that can obtain to, like, anything. But definitely, like, in comedy, there's just, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's 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 so, in, <laughs> no, uh, though I do have one really good story of my friend faking it. Nice, I'm ready. Um, So <laughs> my friend really wanted to be a um, fashion photographer. Mm. He is now, but what he did was he, um, you, do you know when they have like meet and greets with like celebrities? Like, um, sure. Yeah. 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 Like where it's like, you can meet like Khloe Kardashian at the mall. Oh, like she's like with her book like or something line. like that. Yeah. yeah. Signing of books. Uh-huh. So what he would do is he would wait in this line, like he would wait in all these different lines when people, when famous people were like going and he would start to, he would take like Polaroid pictures or like pictures with his camera. Not, he wasn't in the picture. He would just be right. like, I don't want to take a picture with you. I just want to take a picture. And oh he would put them online. Right. Like I had a, I had a session with Chloe. Yeah. He would ah! be like, tonight I took this picture. I took this picture. I took yeah. this picture. Right. And he ended up getting a job because people were like, oh, oh he's snap, he's, you. yeah. I love and, it. and in reality, he was just waiting in line. That's pretty smart. And I think that's like, because fashion photography and all those kind of creative fields, it's like, yeah. they're so saturated. Nobody really knows what is, go- like, it, like the difference between a good one and a bad one, like it takes a lot of expertise. So sometimes people don't know. Maybe. Exactly. And so then when they see that, it's kind of like, well, if that person signed off on you, you must be. Ex- right, and and he right. had it like it it literally was from his camera, but it just yeah. was like right. It wasn't the same situation as like Chloe calling him up and being like, hey, yeah. come on down to wherever the hell they live." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> details, no, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I think that's so real because I and I kind of hate it, but it's like the minute something you get is legitimized by like a company or like you know, the minute I man, I just I just feel like especially with creative stuff where it is so subjective. Yeah. It's like, 
people are just like oh, i don't know what like inside their heads i feel like we're like i don't know what's good but oh well if you were on that tv show or like you were signed off by that big producer then like you must be good so i want to work with you too you know it's no like, for sure it's like a mob mentality or like a weird crowd like i can't think for myself so i have to have everybody else think for me so if like steven spielberg is there then maybe he can think for me you know it's no like, yeah I and know. i i just i don't know i love i love stories i i love stories of like either of like um like really low points or like really like people like yeah they like everyone like someone co-signed on this person and yeah. then they took off but they've right. been like busting their butt right. for and it's like, like it's not like they're they're actual material got better it's yeah like, or their content or whatever it's like they just got that one guy to like be like yeah you're good <laughs> exactly and then everyone was like yeah 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 me too i i, I have an eye for that yeah yeah i, like, I roll with them yeah, i got yeah. that i guess we're just all you know it's kind of like when people name drop it's like oh you were hanging out with so and so you know yeah then, then suddenly they become interesting i do notice that with um I kind of feel like in certain friends, you know, there's certain friends where it's like, well, that's not, maybe they're not friends, but you know, where certain people, it's like, they'll often be the ones to name drop or be like, oh, well, I was doing this with this person. And then they're just as, um, like, they're kind of just as vulnerable to like, if you were to name drop, then they'd become more interested in you. you yeah. Know? It's I, kind of like a currency. I kind of hate that. That's why oh, I mean, when it's terrible. <laughs> when I um so when I used to have this cool job in animation, I used to actually tell everyone I sold insurance. Oh, because people would be like, "Oh, you work there? Like, can I send you something?" Yeah, or they would be like, "Oh, because I I worked in well, okay, uh, oh, okay, I was gonna say where I worked. I was, but I'm, eh, I don't That's know, right. not gonna animation, but animation, yeah, but yeah. um, I I worked at, like I worked on the end where it's like you I could kind of help. S- well, I couldn't help, but it sounded like I could help get people positions, sure. but I couldn't really. Right, right, right. Um, I didn't really have the clout, but I had a title that sounded like, oh, yeah. maybe you can help me. And so I just told everyone I worked in insurance, yes. and like it was interesting just to see who would like roll with me and who would hang with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like a lot of i don't know i like i like throwing out benign facts like i don't really like to say like cool facts about myself i like to be like <laughs> i like yeah okay yeah lavender festival yeah and then That's it's like cool. then it, <laughs> <laughs> then i get I'm gonna roll with you <laughs> exactly you're gonna come get some um, beef brisket yeah yeah oh damn um, yeah, I mean, that's very undercover boss of you, right? Because you're like, oh, just hang out with me. Oh, just kidding. I can pay for your college. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pay for anybody college. No, no, I'm still yeah. paying for mine. It's the same idea of undercover but, boss. But yeah, right? but I, I totally agree because it's like, it's like so many times it's like, um, it's interesting with like going to open mics mm-hmm. um, that I feel like sometimes funny can be like a currency. Oh, it totally is. The minute you go on stage... And like our funny people are like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but then they totally ignore it before. Yeah, and then when there's mm-hmm. when there's new people into the scene, there's a ten that there's a sense of like people isolate them, or if they're like even if they're like they're it's growing, like grind it out first kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's a weird thing, and I've always embraced people, you know, just like as for like because I yeah, the thing yeah. about this is like anybody, it's like it's all a, like you said subjective, and it's also all a matter of like how many hours you're putting in will like, like, you know, it, actually translate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I'm always like friends with pretty much everybody, but I noticed, um, how people were different towards me when they first met me mm. versus once I got on stage and then they saw. Right. Right. They're like, Oh, exactly. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I mean, same thing for me, I think. And it might be cause you know, I mean, I think, you know, guys who look like comics, so I'm thinking, like, white guys who are bearded or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. They kind of get a little bit more, like, oh, you must be a comic versus, like, I'm sure you've had this, like, I will still kind of get turned away sometimes at the, you know, they're like, oh, what are you here? It's, like, somebody's girlfriend or are you, you know, this and that. It's, like, no, I'm actually, like, on the show. I'm the, on the lineup or, like, well, or then, you know, people figure it out and it's, like, becoming more. My like, favorite now, is when yeah. I'm in the crowd and someone thinks that they can do crowd work to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, please right? don't. Please yeah, no, don't. I hate that. But it's, like, I, I guess, like. Yeah, I try to be the best audience member I can be, but at some point it gets a little. Right. Yeah, I'm, like, well, this is going to be weird when I go up. Yeah, and then okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> I try not. That's I guess why we yeah. avoid sitting in the audience or whatever. But yeah, interesting. interesting. Or even in open mics, people will be like, "Yo, so are you a comic?" And it's like, "Well, this is like a room where it's just comedians." Right? Yeah. Like, like, who would I be? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess like I'm looking for a comedy uh daddy, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just coming to these not mics. Pay the bills. Um exactly. Yeah, I guess like with the currency thing. Yeah, I don't know. And I I mean, I'm not like totally innocent of that either. Does that make sense? Cuz there's just so many wacky people in comedy that No, like, I agree. If they I like don't really want to associate and in the sense of like, well, I don't, you know, I've had weird things where it's like you get the weird person who's like texting you all the time because you gave them that, you know, gave them their number. No, their number I, I, I totally, like, so I, think, yeah. I know, I, to, I, I, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is with caution, people. Yeah, yeah. So like, with, well, if they go on stage and they're funny, then I'm like, oh, okay, there's a certain sense of like, yeah, they do this. That is actually true. So that has right happened now. to me a few times where I've talked to someone like right before they're about to go up and right, we've like right. done the thing and then it's like weird sex jokes for like mm -hmm. five minutes of like them a little bit better right yeah and then you're like eh, 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 maybe we shouldn't yeah yeah <laughs> if that's like that is true that you can kind of see how their mind works but i guess i give like i guess i i, I like to give people benefit of the doubt but i won't give oh, them my cell phone number right, right. it was um it wasn't even my cell phone i think i you know facebook friends. yeah i mean i i, I do have like some, some bad shit uh-huh Oh, on Facebook? Oh, no, no. It's just like I remember, you know, uh, people would prod. Okay, like, let's become Facebook friends so that, okay, yeah, that's harmless. Right? Yeah. And, like, there's Messenger. <laughs> and I feel like it was, like, hitting this one comment who was just like, hey, where, you know, where have you been? How have you been? And then it was like, you, you like, when I wasn't responding, he was like, you're so mean. I hate you. You know, like, I was like <laughs> what? How did this happen? Like, I literally, from not interacting, it just went from, like, happiness to rage to it's, like <laughs> it's like there's that meme like some guy is said in some girl's inbox just having a conversation to himself it's literally like it's like wall ball yeah it was crazy but i have a yeah, guy so i avoid that i have a guy that sends me hearts every day like <laughs> Sorry. Uh, on instagram yeah, and like i yeah. just want to get i don't even view it anymore but it's just like i can just see it's just yeah, one heart and it's just like yeah and I feel like I should block it. I've had some weird scenarios. Like, I think, did you hear about, I don't know, probably, never mind. Uh, well, me, I don't know. I've had some weird things. Yeah, like, yeah. there was a guy who um, I was, like, cordial to, and then it ended up, it ended up, uh, he ended up, like, naming his kid after me. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he has a wife. Yeah. Okay, well, well, but he was, he didn't, right. he didn't like lead with the wife. You get what I'm saying? And then no, I discovered yeah, the I mean, wife and then I discovered that she was eight months pregnant. Oh, shut Oh my God. So like four months later. Oh wait, no. How long does it take to get? <laughs> no, no. Like he... A month later. Oh my God. I did not realize that. I mean, yes, I know it's nine months for babies, but I thought it was a year. <laughs> four months later, that baby came out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so... But it was, it was, he was, when she, when he met me, it was like, it was like, she was like eight months pregnant. And then, and he didn't lead with that. And then basically she ended up being, um, she gave birth. And when they gave birth, they named it Lexi, Lexi. Grace. Whole, oh, the full. Yeah. Thing. Wait, that's your full name, right? Or is your last name something else? Is my last, well, okay. So I used Grace because, um, my last name is very, uh, it's just very boring. It's like very like, you know, so Grace is my middle name, but yeah, he named the baby Lexi Grace and he spelled it how I spell Lexi, which is not the normal way to spell I Lexi. E. I spell it I E. Some people do Y, some some people people do y or, I, or just I. I, just I yeah. Um, I named it that way because that was the web domain I could get. Nice. Amazing. So yeah. now this baby is spelled with the same okay. name. As... She can't get that web domain because it's taken. Exactly. Um, I see. Okay. Wow. Weird. That's mm -hmm. um, just a month of knowing someone and then like fully committing your child. To yeah. Them. And it wasn't even like a, I just said like, oh man, it just was like a brief thing. Like I was like, you know, cool shirt. Like it wasn't. And then did he like message you later saying like, oh, here's meet Lexi Grace the baby. No, he just started messaging me like, hey, what are you up to? What are you doing? Oh, da, da, da. And I was just oh, like, no. kind of like, oh, I'm reading. Cause like, I don't. I'm reading. <laughs> beautiful i i have a i have a hard time and i'm working on it about being more upfront when i reject people but it just was more it's hard. yeah yeah i do have a bit right now about that where like you know it's sort of like we do feel like we have to give an excuse sometimes whether that's like oh i have a boyfriend or like, you know what i mean like it can't just yeah. be like, i'm not interested because and it's not even on us like i mean some of it like i could totally learn as well to be more confrontational and like stand up for myself more but a lot of it is just like it's really scary because yeah. like people retaliate. Yeah, like, no, I exactly. Have, like I, I'm pretty sure. Okay, this is. Um, 
I guess like trigger warning. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure like <laughs> trigger know, warning, trigger, trigger warning. warning. Yeah, but um, so when I was in college, I'm pretty sure, and I was like, I'm you know, I don't remember faces that well, but like I walked past with friends, I walked past a group of guys, yeah, who were waiting outside of like a restaurant, and they like cat called and like obviously I didn't respond because I was like, I don't yeah. know what's going on, and then later that night they came after me and like started chasing me and said they're gonna kill me. It was like really scary, but also it was fine. There was like security. Okay, and okay, ran. okay. It was fine. Um, it ended up being fine, but it was like okay. Well, yeah. No wonder we don't want to do, like, no wonder we don't want to like straight up be like fuck off, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. come like after you because if they're already weird enough to pursue that hard, it's like a little bit, or if they're already weird enough to like get offended by getting rejected, yeah. Then like something else is off so there might also be violent you know so it is not you know it's not a illogical thing to not be confrontational or whatever no for right? sure because it's like shit can go down dude i mean you don't know that guy's weird for even reaching out when his wife is eight months pregnant yeah no you know? it's, it's definitely for sure like you never know yeah it's just like you gotta kind of like de-escalate that that's like Sometimes when I'm riffing on things, mm-hmm. like I won't necessarily, uh, if something, so, if someone said something really weird before or like really like kind of scary at a mic, yeah. I might, um, I might, I have to comment on it, but I might not comment directly on Like it might just be like, oh, okay. Like very sweetly. Cause I don't want to deal with like drama after. No, no, no. And sa- same too. Cause I know right now there's a big push to like, cut, like nip it in the butt or, or at least, say you're talking in the workplace or something and somebody says something kind of uh, sexist, then like, yeah. I think there's a push right now where we're like, we have to call that out today because hashtag <laughs> time's up, right? Yeah. But it's like, also, you might be not in a position to make that call. You know what I mean? Like, what, yeah. if, you're, uh, what if that's the big boss? And like, there's still, that hasn't been fixed yet where we yeah. can be like, hey, boss, don't say that. Like, you think they're going to keep you around? You don't know. And it's your job, you know, things like that. So yeah. I feel like it is still. Just for clarity, I was laughing because I, I've, I've, uh, I was just thinking about something I had something that I saw where someone was just like it just ended up being like a full blown like fist fight and it was oh, just shit. like uh-huh. we've we've created violence from this act of Oh yeah. You mean like somebody being like, Hey, don't say that and they're like, Say it to my fist. Exactly. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, yeah, I think people do you know, some people thrive in that yeah. environment, but I don't get the sense that I do that. No, I don't <laughs> I would not be able to fight I'm not like I've like I I'm like a I feel like I get very I get very I'm not a good confrontation person. Oh god, I'm not. Like no, I um really. I'm not I don't I don't I'm not a huge confrontation um person like it, like even saying confrontation I like started shrinking. Yeah, I um <laughs> like I used to take boxing lessons oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not spar. I, that's like how much yeah, I was. That's confrontation. I was just sure. like, just the mids, just the mids. Oh yeah, somebody going like this is that what that is? Like, yeah, no one. Answer. Yeah, don't like. I didn't want to. Like, we're gonna fight each other. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like confrontation at its most. Uh, I remember visible. One time in school, I got into a fight. Um, like someone, they like, came, like they came. I didn't initiate it. They started, mm. and I ended it. But I cried. Like I won the fight, but I cried. <laughs> And the other person was like, just chill. And they lost? They, How do you win a fight? They they were... <laughs> I am not, I'm not up to date on fight culture in school. Um, well, I went to a, a very uh, public, I mean, a very private uh, Lutheran oh, right. school. Burbank, right? What are, uh, what are we talking about? I went to school in, uh, yeah, like Burbank-ish area. Cool. But it, this was in grade school. Because in high oh, school, right. I was like, every, I was, it was cool. I was, because I had... Um, but yeah, in uh, in grade school, it just was kind of just like I punched him, and then the teacher finally came. Oh, like good, good. it was like oh, break up, yeah. Sure. <laughs> and I just like started bawling yes. my eyes. I was like, I didn't mean to hit him. He just came, and, and then he's got like an so ice tag. Oh. And then he actually, even though I won the fight, he got ex- like he got oh, uh, right, suspended. Kind of. Yeah, because they were just like, this girl is so traumatized. Oh, yeah, she regrets it enough. She won't do it again. He might. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, wow. I am impressed. But, yeah, I mean, one one bout like that and, like, you know, 
out for life. Yeah. In the confrontation for the rest of your life. And then, like, I, cr- I think I cried about it, like, it cried about it a little bit, l- like, later that week. And then I also, like, the next oh, three so years, bad. I was like, uh-huh. maybe I could go to jail. Oh, like, I just thought. Just like, yeah, anything violent is so scary. Yeah. I think the statute of limitations is now I think up. you're good. Yeah. So, so you think... can talk about it on this podcast. We yeah. We edit it out. First. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, wow. That is intense. I think that it's just, like, I don't know scary i don't like that either because it just reminds me of like well then what's gonna happen it can't end well you know like somebody's gonna get hurt yeah but i mean obviously sometimes it needs to be done but i haven't encountered too much in my life where i'm like i need to fucking stand up to this person and it has to end all relationships (laughs) sounds like my kind of day um but that brings me to i guess we could talk about like things that you like to do in your life to keep a keep up that Oh, so what is it called again? Oh, so winning smile. Oh, so winning smile. <laughs> yeah. Um, I gotta write that down. Yeah, so cool. yeah he. I. I also. Yeah. Yeah. But I like that you printed out or whatever you have. You kept those letters because I was actually telling my sister recently or whatever. Not telling, but you know, um, we had talked about the fact that uh, it can help to keep some of those affirmation things. Um, from other people in like a notebook or something too just to turn to because if you are getting in a headspace where you're like man everybody hates me and then you open that you're like oh actually that person oh and that person oh and then that person so like it's a good reminder yeah it's all um sorry i did like some weird breathing thing on the yeah, thing i, mean, I went gonna i went like <laughs> <laughs> it's over. um but yeah i think some things that i like to do is um one i'm very I have to be kind of cautious about what I eat mm-hmm. um, because if I have, like, a lot of sugar, I notice that I get, like, a little cranky. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I also get very – um a scary thing. Yeah, like also soy drug. for uh-huh. me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you think so- it's, like, an allergy or something? Soy makes me, like, very, um, uh, you know, nasty. <laughs> Like, I, I just turn very catty. Interesting. I turn into... Like soy milk or, like, soy... What else is soy? Soy sauce? Anything. Soy sauce. <laughs> soy any, beans. Yeah, anything. Uh-huh. Like, soy beans are supposed to be very good for you anyway, because, like, Monsanto got all up in that shit. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I try so to stay... Fine. Pesticides. Try away from soy. Um, I tend to read a lot of, like, mm. things... That I watch... I read a lot of uh, books about, like, how people got to where they were. Oh, cool. Autobiographies, biographies, um, biographies, um, autobiographies. Um, technically, I like, I like, I also like reading like a lot of conversations, like about like when people are getting interviewed and stuff about yeah. like how they, uh, they came about it. Um, do you have any? Um, excuse me. Do you have any like particular idols that you would want to emulate? Um, I really like. Like, you mean career-wise? Or? Career-wise or just, you know, essence-wise, I guess, because maybe they don't do exactly what you want to do. but Yeah, but I like their mindset. Their <laughs> mindset. Uh, oh, there's so many people that I like their mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like – I mean, I, I keep – in my room, there's so many Muhammad Ali quotes. Ooh. Uh-huh. Because I – he, you know, he has this quote, like, I hated every minute of training, mm. but um, – I'm forgetting it now, but it's like I hated every minute of training. But like at the end, like that's I I knew that this like if I kept if I went through the pain, I'd become a winner. It's like something like that. And then I also, oh I guess okay yeah I do I do actually. Um, Ronda Rousey, oh, who okay, used to yeah. be a UFC champion, right, right. and now like wrestling, and now westling. Um, I so I'm like I'm like really um like. You like her, these- for not liking confrontation, you like these fighters. <laughs> yeah, I like fighters a lot. Um, I think it's because they keep going back when, like, times get tough. Sure, yeah. And Ronda Rousey, like, she um, – her mom in particular had, like, a really big um, – her mom actually used to do judo. And so Ronda Rousey's signature move is the arm bar. And her that was her mom's signature move and Whoa. the reason why is because her mom used to have really bad i know too much about her no, but her great. mom used to have really bad knees no. so um that's why she couldn't she couldn't stay on the she couldn't stay up so she had to take everything to the ground so her mom got really good at the arm bar so when Rhonda was little, she I say it like I know her Rhonda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when Ron, Ron, <laughs> when Rhonda, yeah, Ronnie. <laughs> uh-huh. um, when Rhonda was little, um, she told her mom like when she was like twelve or thirteen because before that she was actually 
um, when she, I think up till the age she was like nine, she was mute, like she couldn't speak. Oh wow, Ronda Rousey. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and when she was like, she told her mom, "Oh, I want to do this," and her mom said, "Okay, if you want to do it, you got to be serious about it." And she, her mom would wrestle her every night with like an arm bar. Like she would have to get out of the arm bar and like put oh, her mom in an arm God. bar. So she was like. Hello, child. Time to like train you for a fight. Yeah, and her mom, wow. her okay. mom's, uh, like one of the things that Ronda Rousey. There's a few quotes that from her mom that Ronda Rousey is always about. Like, um, one of Ronda Rousey's quotes is like, um, "You always gotta finish it in the ring. Like, don't leave it up to decision." So it's kind of like you work the hardest you can now, oh. so that you know when the time comes, you know you've got it under control, and you want to because like the thing is, she, she, her mom wanted her to practice so much. This is another quote. She wanted her to be the best on her worst day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, don't leave it up to chance kind of thing. Exactly. And her mom mm-hmm. would send her off to competitions when she was sick. Um, like when she was just not well. Make um, sure that she could live that. Yeah. She just kept putting her. So like there would be no excuse. And her yeah, mom would like say tiger like. your mom fighting. <laughs> yeah. And her mom would be like, you know, don't let defeat in your body like so if you feel defeat like don't let your don't let your body know or your brain know like just keep going out and like pushing past it like so if you have a bomb the best thing is to go out like the next day and like to to keep doing that but yeah i so i i really love ronda rousey her mom also made her train like with armenian men when she was like 13 and she talks about how she cried every day because she kept losing and losing and losing against men Against men, yeah, against I'd grown imagine, men. Yeah, I'd imagine a child <laughs> might lose against grown men. And when she said that that made her hard, like harder, like, you know, that made her like have this like eagle eye focus. Yeah. No and, wonder she's so good. Yeah. And yes. so I kind of, I'm very, I guess with my comedy, I'm very like regimented. Like I like to go to a lot of open mics mm-hmm. a week. That's good. Mm-hmm. Like I do, I think it's, 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 I think I'm, I, I can't. I don't know if I can keep up the amount of mics, especially because I'm getting more shows. But it's like I used to do like 17 to 20 open mics a week. That's crazy. Um, (laughs) Because I just like stacking and like just like putting keep going out there because like then you stop caring less. Like you can stop caring about what the audience thinks and you feel more free and it's more you're more confident because you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. I did this set already like 18 times before. Yeah. 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 I do notice that about. Or something somebody had described. And this about, like, auditions, yeah. too, that it's, like, when it stops being an event, you know? Like, that it's not like, oh, wow, this is the one thing that I have all week. Let me hope, you know, it goes well. Like, once you lose that, then it's like, oh, okay. Then it kind of becomes more normal. Exactly. And like, maybe that's, you know, that at least it shows, I guess. Yeah. You know, that it's, it's like, oh, she's not just here today. It's like she's here all the time. And I don't mind. Like, I feel like all of my favorite people took it to the face a lot. Like, it's not <laughs> that, like, I think it's, like, kind of – it's always, for me, to keep me positive, it's walking in a uh, thing of gratitude and always remembering that, like, to be – there's a great book called Mindset, and it's basically – the gist of it is to be successful, you have to fail a lot. Mm-hmm. And you have to fail often. True. Yeah. So I kind of get excited about failing and I go like, okay, if I fail and I fail and I fail and I fail, I'm going to get better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my also favorite stories is Lisa Kudrow. Mm -hmm. So Lisa Kudrow had auditioned for Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah. And it was like in this year, it was like someone in Groundlings, they were like, one of us is going to get it. If it's not you, Mm -hmm. it's going to be me. It's going to be. So all the girls were a buzz. Like, it's going to be one of us. Cool. Uh Uh-huh. And then they went and none of them got it. Mm-hmm. They ended up going to some random person. Mm-hmm. So then like a year later, she ends up, uh, she ends up booking Frasier oh, uh-huh. as a, like the series, like a series regular. Uh-huh. And it's, it's guaranteed like all of these episodes. And yeah. it's like, she's like, yes, I finally made it. This, everyone knows this is going to be a hit show. Yeah. It's going to be great. Uh-huh. Uh, the day before she's going to start shooting. She gets, and it was on like deadline, like everywhere. It was like Lisa Kudrow, Lisa Kudrow. Uh Like everyone's like, so the day before they call her and they go, we decided actually you're not right. And we're going to recast you. Yeah, it happens. I saw just this, you know, this past pilot season, so many recastings. Yeah. And so she was devastated. She was like, she was like, 
oh my because everyone knew like every, like it's it was public yeah. it was almost like she had like a celebration party yeah. and then she had to and like which like it does happen all the time but yeah it still feels like you at least got it right and all these people were like you should not be out in public blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> And she kept going out. And then finally she booked Friends, which just ended up being a huge success. Yeah, right. But I, I love hearing these stories. Like um, Michael Bloomberg has a great story. There's so many. There's a book called Getting There, which I love. Oh, okay. And it's just a book of like basically all these stories of like people that it's like they thought they had their big break and then it wasn't. But then they kept with it and then it happened. I see. Yeah, no, I think because we don't learn about those failures. Typically they're not in the news. They're not really like – T- told literally until they get successful and then write a memoir, right? Exactly. So you just don't even hear about it. So you just think like, oh man, everybody's just constantly 10 for 10, you know, like always swinging and, and hitting and it's all strikes, you know, or whatever. And that's... Pitching strike. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know but anyway, and yeah. that's the thing about Facebook. So, I mean, uh-huh. that's the thing about like Facebook oh, yeah, and Instagram media. is like that it's... Real. Exactly. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. But yeah, I am too. Sure. I think it's... What am I going to post? Like, <laughs> Literally, most of my days are like sitting alone, being like, "Man, fuck," and so I can't post that. It's not interesting, but maybe I should. You know what I mean? Yeah, because no, but that's what it is. I I definitely agree. Like, we don't. I mean, yeah. What are you gonna post? Like, this is yeah, me. Yeah, like this is me sitting alone, thinking about how the decisions in my life have been mainly fails. <laughs> this is me not wanting to leave the house because I don't look great. Right, right, right. This is me like not changing all day and then going back to bed. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, this is me going to uh, the Thai restaurant where everyone knows me, and they go, "Where have you been?" <laughs> where have you been? The usual. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, that's I feel similarly. Like that's kind of why I wanted to do this podcast, or why I like listening to a lot of like longer form things. You know, yeah, then that's where we have the space to like be full human beings rather than just our wins or just our jokes or whatever. Right? It's like a totally more normal, healthier way to present. I think. No, for sure. Um, and I also find like helpful too for like, I guess like re getting into a good headspace is I have, like, a really good mixtape mix of, like, just positive songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially sometimes when I – I feel like there's different songs for different occasions. Like, when I have a big show and I'm a little worried, I might blast some, like, old Kanye. Oh. Like, you know. Like, a good confidence boost and it's, like, high energy. Yeah. And then when I'm feeling down on my, like, self, I might listen to, like, some positive music. Because I also notice if I listen to a lot of negative music, then I start feeling, like – like, yeah. oh, woe is me. The yeah, guy sure. I love is like, what? I don't like wallowing too much. You know, like it is, it can happen. I know with, um, okay, this is kind of dark, but you know that song that came out that was like the Suicide Hotline song? Oh, yeah. So Logic, like, yeah. Yeah, it was like so popular, but it was always on the radio and it starts <laughs> with, like, I just want to, I, yeah. Life, like, like it starts with him saying that and then like the arc is that, then he's like, oh, I have hope now and I want to be alive. Right? <laughs> but it starts with him saying, I just want to die. And like, because it's so catchy, like, I found myself singing, like, I just want to die. And it's like, whoa, what the, like, how does this suicide, like, prevention song turn into me chanting, <laughs> I want to die? Yeah. Like, so I think it was a good song in the sense that, you know, promoted awareness. But uh, that was a funny one because I feel like it kind of did the opposite for me. No, like, I, I totally, I actually, yeah, I, I, I agree. That's because it, yeah, it, it starts out being, like, him being depressed. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like, I want to die. I yeah, wanna, I just yeah. want to die. I want to be alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow, that's catchy. Exactly. I'm going to start saying this all the time. Or there's some songs that you don't even realize that you're saying a bad thing, and then you're like, whoa. Yeah, wow. Oops. They got me. Yeah, I mean, those earworms. Exactly. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I like to do. I like to – I definitely like to move. Like, if I need a, if I need a walk or something, that really helps me. Oh, totally. Um, Smart. And then I think just – like, luckily, I feel like also when I'm down, I just call, like, my friends will call, I'll call my friends. And I know you guys talked about that before, like, yeah, cold calling. Yeah, Esther brought up cold calling, and I'm still not, I'm still foreign to it, I think, because, you know, I get worried in the space of, like, oh, I don't want to bother anyone, which is bad. But yeah. what I did just do recently with one of my close friends, um, shout out to Daniel, is that we, like, did a recurring scheduling. And actually, I did that with some other friends, too, but yeah. this is a little easier because it's just the two of us, so, like, we put in our calendar and I feel like that's kind of a little bit easier because at least it reminds us to do it if like for some reason somebody has to cancel not a big deal we'll just reschedule we'll do it the next week but it's like at least it's there you know because otherwise you know to be the one to initiate it's like as long as it's already there it's more about you have to cancel versus you have to set it up you know 
No, but for that's, sure. That's good that you're able to call. Like I, I know I should just get over it and do that. No, no, it's it's. I mean, everyone's their own, their own. But yeah, I, I, I typically like not all my friends. Obviously, some of them I can't call, but. Like not that they wouldn't pick up, but they're they are like they are busy. Another a few of my friends are on my like we're on the same kind of time zone. Like yeah, that's hard too. Time schedule, so I know like oh they're freelance, so I can call them and oh, they right. they'll probably I'll pick up. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, then they'll they'll hit me back later or we'll hit each other up later. Yeah. One of my friends, we literally just speak with uh, my friend Jer. I just sent him a sushi emoji, Good. and then he goes when, and <gasps> then we just go back and forth. And that's to talk, or is that to get sushi? It's a sushi. Oh, okay, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> when? <laughs> well, that's good that, like, you know, you have a very quick shorthand. <laughs> yeah, sushi is our, our love language. It's Amazing. like we go to it's decompress. Yeah. 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 Do you have favorite uh, favorite sushi places? No, I uh-huh. feel like we, well, I'm right probably sure Jared does, but I, I we always go to different ones because we always like mm-hmm. to, like, explore. Yeah, we always like to try new sushi places because different places have very good rolls and stuff like that. Sorry, I don't know why I ended But sushi is also. Sushi. Hey, that's uh, another good way to, you know, keep it positive. And also, I feel like another thing. Okay, so I, um, one of my side jobs, uh, I work with um, a lot of elderly people that are very successful. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, and one of the big takeaways that I learned from working with all these very successful and like when I'm talking about successful, I'm like like monetarily wealthy. Yeah, uh-huh. like like extremely wealthy, Ooh, like okay. like. Wealth upon wealth upon wealth. Oh, okay. Like lots of you know, like Just like, like a dragon sitting on a pile of gold. Exactly. <laughs> like we, I go to their house and they have like a staff. But Whoa. the one thing I learned from them, and I think I took away from like that's how you become happy, is like if you're constantly learning and you're constantly like learning new things. Like yeah. uh, two of my clients, one is ninety four and one is ninety three. Nice. And um, they're like, one of them was like, I should learn Spanish. And another one is like, I should learn Photoshop. So um, I love it at like 95, just like making some funny mock ups. <laughs> yeah. So like, I think like that's the key to uh, keeping happy is like once I feel like sometimes when I feel like, oh, my God, I'm like so bogged down with stand up. It's like, well, let's take another part of my brain and let's learn mm. like knitting. Let's learn like, Ooh, you know, yeah, like right yeah, now like I'm. A- yeah, like right now I'm learning about what um, cops go through. Like I'm taking a – they have a community cop school. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is – I did not expect this yet. <laughs> You're like knitting and then also cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, learning oh how God. narcs work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, yeah. Um, That's great. Yeah, so it's like it's pretty much me and a bunch of like like it's like post like guys that really wanted like either were in the military or want to be in military and then there's a lot of like older women who are are nosy and kind of want to know like and I'm more on that spectrum of like the nosy women. Yeah. So it's like they come every week and then you know and it's very specific questions usually that they have for the cops where it's like because they give us a lesson and then it breaks and then you can ask questions and people are like 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 yeah last week we had a, a every week is a new cop that comes in and talks about his job wow okay that's so how did you find out about this um farmer's market okay they had like flyers <laughs> oh, they had fi- you were at a farmer's market yeah and there was this yeah, there was this so... older gentleman like 80 year old gentleman who was like you want to know about cop school and i was like You're tell like, me more me yeah exactly <laughs> that's amazing i love that yeah curiosity and like always kind of learning more about the world. And yeah, because I, I think once uh-huh. you start learning things and you start interacting with like new and different people, mm-hmm. like you get like, oh my God, this is so much fun. Like I didn't know that you did that too or you didn't. Cool. Like yeah. lately I've been getting, yeah, I feel like it's, I watch a lot of foreign shows and so I like learning about like different people's sense of humors and different, I don't know, I yeah. like to be open. Yeah, yeah. I mean clearly, I remember, yeah, you had told me about the, uh, the Korean baby shows and stuff, <laughs> which I still follow that sassy uh, baby. Yeah. Yaw, uh, yeah. I don't remember what the handle is, but. Very, Yo, yang, yang, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Very sassy. He's like, so sassy. Facial expressions and the parents really exploit that in a good way. Yeah. For our benefit. Um, and for their money, yeah, probably. Yeah, hopefully. I hope they get some sponsored content. I think so. Them. I think some of the Korean stuff, like they sell stuff. Like yeah, I think yeah, they like sell like food and things. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they deserve it. Um, <laughs> But interesting. That's this is all really. <laughs> I want to keep talking, but I think we have to wrap up. But, no, no, that's good. That's this good. Is, yeah, I mean, these are all great stuff. I'm definitely gonna start exploring more because I think I started doing like Duolingo, trying to learn Japanese, and then 
Yeah, because I really don't know, know any other languages. And it was kind of like a fun... I stopped, but I should redo it again. Um, but it was kind of a fun way to like be like, oh, I'm progressing. There's actually like, like uh-huh. free... Just a side note. There's free stuff you can look online. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, like classes? And um, classes are like um, like Skype buddies where it's like you can Skype with someone from <laughs> Japan. Oh, to like learn it more. And it's like an exchange. Oh, yeah. Like you teach That's them some English and they teach oh, you cool. some Korean. Yeah. I actually have... I just met somebody who does that as her job. I mean Japanese. She Japanese. teaches... Uh, yeah, she teaches English to like kids in China. And like she's kind of nocturnal anyway, so it works with the hours. Yeah, my friend does that, okay, and she's yeah. guys get to get up at three. But it's funny because yeah. some of the kids she teaches are like three or four. Yeah, she told so you're me just like interacting with a baby. Yeah, she <laughs> told me one time that the parents were like usually the parents are in the room, and one parent that wasn't in the room, so the baby just like she was talking to the baby, and then he just dropped it, and then so it was she was teaching to the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> she still had to teaching to the ankles yeah she still had so, to yeah is that effective do the ankles learn because she was like i don't want the parents to be upset <laughs> sure, you gotta keep doing your job yeah yeah it's not her fault that the ankles are on screen um but yeah wow, that's <laughs> great i mean i did not expect that either uh you're great thank you again for doing this and uh, oh yeah anything you want to plug um i guess just i guess just uh I'm going to be putting funny videos out on my YouTube, but I guess yeah. the best way to find that out is on uh, my Instagram, which is at Smile Lexi. Nice. <laughs> oh, so winning. <laughs> oh, with the oh, Without so winning the smile. Oh, so winning. Yeah, smile. Just, just smile. Smile Lexi. Smile Lexi. And it's L-E-X-I-E. Is it S-M-I-L-E-X-I-E? So it goes right into it. Exactly. Nice. Beautiful. See? Good branding. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.